Yes, um, as Xavier mentioned, uh, I'll introduce a data set that we just published um, on go rounds. And why do we care about go rounds? Um, one is they make for very nice visualizations. Um, but first, what is a go round? Just a brief one, because I actually counted on the guys that would have been in front of me scheduled. Uh, they would explain what go rounds are and why we're interested. So I'll have my three sentence what is a go round. Um, for those who don't know what that is, a go-round is a procedure that is initiated when a safe landing or approach cannot be continued and the aircraft has basically to try again. And they can either be initiated by the air crew or by air traffic control. And why there is actually a, quite a bit of research going on in that field is they have uh, an effect on safety and also on the traffic flow and the capacity of an airport because they basically disrupt the traffic flow. Um, so that's, it's quite a hot topic at the moment and quite a few groups are working in that area. And what I'll be talking about in the next 20 minutes is I'll give you a very, very brief introduction. Then I'll talk mainly about the data set itself. And I'll try to give you two examples why we think this data set is interesting um, for you or for the wider kind of world, actually. Um, and then a few conclusions on that. <clears throat> and we started this, the kind of the development of this data set basically as a side effect of, of something that we worked on. Um, because we were interested in finding an answer to the question, we have an airport, or specifically a runway, where we have relatively few observations. And we wanted to kind of find a reasonable estimate to say, OK, we would expect such and such a go-around rate for this runway if there was more traffic there. Um, we have a bunch of features. We, for example, know the airport that we're interested in has a non-standard glide slope angle. Um, we have runway length and so on. And we wanted to uh, estimate what will be the go-around rate when that thing is operated at capacity. Um, and that's why we actually started out developing that data set. Um, so kind of a bunch of key figures to start with. Um, we ended up collecting about 9 million landings, a bit less than 9 million landings. And we have about 33,000 go-rounds detected in the data set. Um, we tried to keep it kind of representative of kind of what's going on in the world, but that's a bit limited um, by the coverage that we have with OpenSky. So as you can see on the graph on the right, um, we were heavily biased towards Europe and the United States. Um, we have a few observations in Asia, very little in Africa and kind of Oceania. Um, and all the data was collected basically throughout the year of 2019, so pre-COVID. And I'll keep that one short. If you're interested, you can read that in the paper. It's a bit more de detailed. Um, it basically lives on Xavier's awesome traffic library. Um, so we used the traffic library to download the data, the historical data from OpenSky, used Xavier's um, assignment of runways, and we slightly modified the go-around detection that is a bit more um, insensitive to noise. What it does, it uses um, Junsi's <laughs> open AP um, algorithm to assign flight phases, so climb, level, and descent. And it assumes that it's a go-around if you have a descent that is aligned on a runway, um, then interrupts with a climb phase again, and then tries again to approach. Um, again, it's a bit more detailed in the paper. And how that data set looks like is it's available as a compressed CSV. Um, you have basically almost 9 million rows. And for each entry, you have a flag, has go round, which is just a Boolean, and a bunch of other fields. And I chose three examples here. Um, so the first one is just a simple landing. The flag is, has go round is false, so it's not a go round. Um, and the second one is kind of your standard go round, where an aircraft just approaches a runway, makes a go round, and lands again on the same runway. Um, and what you can see, oops, um, you basically have the number of approaches is two, and the number of approach runways is one. And people working with go-around probably figure out pretty soon that you have a lot of weird things going on with go-arounds. For example, if you have um, calibration flights, which happen frequently, or you have an airport where you have training flights with small aircraft, you usually want to filter these out, um, depending a bit on what your analysis is focused on. Um, so we provide also the information on 
how many times um, an approach was attempted. So in this case, we have six times uh, the aircraft attempted six times to land and on two different runways. So these are kind of easy if you want to drop out stuff that is not relevant for your analysis or if you're interested in that the other way around. Um, so that helps you kind of filter your data a bit. And that's kind of the minimal data set that we publish. Um, we also have an augmented, augmented data set that has additional information that might be interesting for the user. So we have um, aircraft specific stuff uh, like the ICAO type code, um, work turbulence category and so on. And we have airport specific information in there such as glide slope angle, runway length, if it has an intersection. Um, and then we have metadata also included in the data set. Um, this data set, I mean, they're all publicly available. This one is probably a bit easier to get started to do some practical work. So we thought, thought that let's put some more information in there that is actually easily available already, um, just to get people started a bit faster. And we spent quite a bit of time in trying to assess the quality. Um, and we were mainly focused on kind of the false positive and false negative rates of the go-around detection. And what we did for that is we plotted basically these plots that you see here. Um, on the left side, you have um, landings that are classified as not having a go-around, and the ones on the right-hand side, right side are the ones that are classified as go-arounds. We generated, um, I think, eight plots uh, with 500 landings each, and you can quite easily visually see um, if there is something going on, if there is a go-around or not. You would see something kind of, oops, where's my mouse? Um, you would see something like a circle or something. And it's quite easy to see if you misclassified something. And with that, we basically manually went through each of the runway that we have and tried to estimate the false positive uh, rates and false negative rates. And all in all, we can say that the quality is at least for our application, satisfying. That depends a bit if it's satisfying for you or not. If you want to figure that out, all these plots plus the Excel sheet that we manually filled with the estimate folder for the false positive and false negative rates are available with the data set. So if you're looking at data for a specific airport, probably it makes sense that you look at the plots first. It probably makes sense to find that in the kind of the quality assessment and figure out do you want to use that or not. Um, what is really obvious when you go kind of sift through the data, it heavily depends on the coverage that we have on this airport. So it really, the quality at some airports is awesome, at some airports is not that great. And that's kind of why we're not kind of having some fixed numbers in here and in the paper, but it really makes more sense to look at it kind of on the basis of the case that you're looking at. Um, so kind of the quick recap here in the middle. Um, the quality is actually not too bad. We are actually quite happy with it. Um, one thing to keep in mind is we know that we're slightly underestimating the go-around rate um, because we're having a bit of trouble with detecting go-arounds that are initiated very, very early and basically have no or a very short climb phase. And we have a bit of a problem with go-arounds that have very tight radius, um, as you usually see with small aircraft that do training flights. Um, yep. And now, um, back to the original question where I started. Um, okay, now we want to answer the question, okay, how can we estimate the go-around rate for an airport where we have too few or no observations, but we have a bunch of features? And what we did is we came up with a generalized linear model um, that models the probability of the go-around, which is kind of the same as the go-around rate. <clears throat> and the features that we use for that are basically very simple, it's a very simple model. We have only four predictors. We used, if, it, if the runway has an intersection, um, we use the runway length in kilometers, we use the glide slope angle in degrees, and we use the region of the airport. And that's kind of our simple model. And the results look something like that. Um, so the dots are the estimates of the coefficients, and the blue lines are the confidence interval in the estimates. And um, if you're not so familiar with these, so everything that is on the right-hand side of the line basically increases the probability of a go-around or increases the, uh, the go-around rate. Everything that is on the left-hand side decreases it. Um, the problem is a bit with these kind of linear models, they're a bit hard to interpret, so I'll make a brief example. 
if we take an airport that has a go-around rate of three go-rounds per thousand landings, um, that's kind of our baseline. If everything else is being equal, what happens if we increase the glide slope by one degree? Um, we can compute that. Um, I think you can look up the math. It's kind of widely known. Um, what we end up is uh, we start with a probability of one, uh, sorry, three per thousand. And if we increase the glide slope, um, we basically end up with a probability of a go around of 4.4 in a thousand. So that's almost 50% increase of go around rate if you have a non standard approach, which is four degrees. Kind of, it's just an, it's kind of an example to show a bit what the model can predict now. Um, and that basically gives us the answer that we wanted. But actually, while working on the data, we found out it's actually quite interesting to look at other things um, because it opens up new ways to look at go rounds. What we have here, um, that's actually the whole example. It's just one graph, but it's very loaded and there's a lot of information in there. What we have is we have different airports in the US, five different airports. And for each airport, we uh, kind of plot the go around rate for the top um, operators there. So the ones with the most traffic that we observed in our data. And one, for example, interesting example is if you look at oops, um, JFK. Uh, so the airport in New York, um, you have the three operators, American, Delta, and JetBlue. And they're basically all um, hub operators there. They basically have their own terminals there. So you would assume they're kind of comparable. Um, but it's interesting to see that um, JetBlue has a significantly lower go-around rate than the baseline of the airport. By the way, the first one is always the baseline of the airport. And now that kind of begs the question, why do they have a, uh, kind of such a significantly lower go-around rate. And it's not, I mean, the question is a bit twofold because it can go in both directions. One, it can indicate that there might be performing fewer go-rounds than it's appropriate. They're taking higher risks. On the other hand, it might also be that they're perfectly fine. Uh, they're just more efficient. Um, and the other operators kind of do perform too many go-rounds. So I think both from an operator's perspective as also from an airport's perspective, it might make sense to look into that and see why the, the rates are so different. And kind of this is something similar applies to um, Dallas-Fort Worth, where you have really widely varying go-around rates between operators. And again, I'm, it, our point is not kind of to kind of blame anybody, which I just show the facts. And the thing is more, if there is a way to, for example, figure out what are operational problems that cause this high number of go-rounds, it might be a good idea to look at these and see if there is mitigations that can be done. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a, with the new data set we that we collected, these kind of analysis where you can compare different airports or different operators at different airports is kind of new because as far as we know, no such data set is available yet. Um, so, <clears throat> kind of to conclude, what we have here is, compared to what was available before, a much, much bigger data set. Um, the studies that we've seen usually deal with go-around data sets that have up to, say, 1,000 go-arounds, and we have 33,000, so it's quite a bit more. Um, the data set that we published is mainly metadata, so not the actual trajectories, but if you go onto, rep onto the repository where the data lives, and if you have access to the historical database, there's a little MATLAB, uh, sorry, Python script that you can use to download the actual trajectories um, from the metadata if you're interested in that. Um, and we hope that it allows for a bit more novel or more robust um, research into go-rounds. Um, and we're actually pretty sure we have a lot of creative people here that somebody will pick it up and have a new awesome application for it. Um, the data is available on Zenodo. Um, and yeah, check it out if you want to. Uh, it's also in the paper, so you don't necessarily have to take pictures. Um, yeah, that's that.